everybody. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Lubos Kotsman. I'm a release manager for Leap, also newly in Leap Micro, which is uh, one of our newest distributions, which is what will be the today's talk about. Um, so about Micro, oh, yeah. What color do you see? It should be orange. Is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's orange, okay. Uh, so about Leap Micro, Leap Micro is not your typical distribution. It's not really intended to be run on your desktop. What this is really about, it's as low maintenance as possible. I guess that we are not doing as good job as Leap Micro, which has, you, you know, you install it, you don't have to upgrade anything for up to five, uh, four years. Just keep on doing, you know, your security updates. And then at some point in time, you may actually migrate directly even maybe to next major version. And I feel this is pretty awesome. So, um, you know, if I'm just really curious about running single, I don't know, container or some application somewhere, maybe on your Raspi at home, which is what I do, uh, this, you don't have to touch it. And if you need to touch it, you can just touch it through cockpit, uh, which is there by default, which is, I, I like it. It's it's nice idea for my little use case. I wouldn't use it, you know, on my desktop, because it doesn't have desktop, like uh, Micros desktop. It's a different use case. Uh, we have one, we have multiple images. Uh, People are asking, like, and do you have image for Zen? You know, like, our kernel can actually work on KVM Zen as well. So you have one image which rules them all. Uh, so that's kind of nice about it. I mentioned low maintenance. So I told you about the four-year story uh, and about management for the web, but this is not where we are. You know, if I would be managing every release and the cadence is two releases a year for four years, I would be managing two releases, you know, at the same time. And me and Max, we just, we just can't do that. Uh, I have some ideas about how this could be tackled, but uh, since we do not know about Alp, you know, like when it will, well, we have idea about deadlines, I'm not sure if we can meet them. Uh, I'm not sure if it's needed. Maybe Alp will cover the use cases of micro as well, therefore, you know, we could just transition users. Uh, let's see. I've mentioned it has two releases a year, and it's, uh, you know, I also mentioned on the slides that it's twice as fast as less. And people were asking, so is it like closer to tumbleweed? No, that's, that's actually wrong, you know, point of angle, that you are actually looking at the problem because it's really based on the Slee 15 code stream. Can't be, you can't have much in your kernel. What you can have is, uh, you know, like Slee has uh, 12 years, uh, 12 months release cycle. So there's some development cycle, some features are ready already by, you know, certain time and we are waiting for release to release these. But with Leap Micro, we can actually release them more often, and that's the idea. So you are basically, Slice is catching up, you know, it's a single code stream, but some of the updates or features are basically released, you know, uh, half a year earlier. And I believe that the Slim Micro release cadence is, is it like spring, autumn, sort of, so this is where the releases are. We are always failing, so we are trying, you know, with the capacity that we have to release it as, as soon as possible. So we will be trying to aim at these releases as well. The first one was tricky. Um, Right, I guess that I've already covered this one. So, what are the differences? Uh, I don't know, I didn't, there is no dedicated logo to Slim Micro to my knowledge, like not as we have, yeah. So I use the, uh, the chameleon, but uh, if you actually know how the Leap logo looks like, which is basically an arrow, which is pretty cool, uh, we've done my, uh, with, it was Sassy, I believe, who did the logo, and it's clever, it's, you know, like the, if you kind of merge them together, this is what we got. I like it. There are stickers, so if you would be, if you would be wondering what are the stickers about, it's, it's Leap Micro stickers. So, um, it's just like Leap, it's actually based on binaries from Slim Micro. We do only minimal tweaks, like uh, there are some hacks actually that we have to do to, you know, like postpone some services like uh, iSCSID. Uh, we offer the self-install image on AR64, which is not the case for Slim Micro, so little differences, but it's basically the same binaries. I mentioned the lifecycle difference. We support it over two Leap Micro releases. So once the next next is out, we kind of kill whatever was there before, and we continue. Maybe if there is interest, maybe if there is like delay of out, we will have to address you know that space. This would be a really cheap alternative to keep Slee 15 code stream alive in the community for a long time for you know host OSs. I see maybe some opportunities in that space. Uh, Slim Micro has live patching, which we don't have. Uh, I believe there is also a plan for user space live patching. I don't think it's part of 5.2. Uh, and, you know, that, that's maybe interesting because this is immutable OS on every changes you should technically reboot. 
this could cover, you know, this could actually minimize the downtime if you need it. Um, right, and neither SNE micro nor Leap micro are actually aiming at desktop. This is the domain of, of micro as desktop. It's really cool. Try it out. I'm actually doing demo from, uh, yeah, from micro as desktop. I'm playing with it, so, you know, I know the pain points. Uh, totally recommend it to everyone. And yeah, so don't, don't expect any desktop on Leap Micro. That's not our use case. It's not that if you would like be, if you would be interested in adding that feature, I'm not stopping you. We can do that, but it's not in MVP for that. So how to deploy? I think this is kind of tricky, and some people just, you know, are used to installer. I'm not sure. Yeah, screenshots are big enough. So the first one is the self-installer, which is. You know, we had it broken for a long time, so I didn't exactly know what is it about, but once I actually tested it, when I, once I played it, I, I, I was really surprised by it. It makes total sense, especially for VMs. So what you are getting is a bootable image, USB, DVD, whatever you want, and it has actually a simple wizard that just, like, dumps the image to your drive, and it scales it to whatever size you have. And it's pretty cool. I can imagine Suzy could use it also for in-play distribution. It's really easy. Actually, you have to confirm that you are okay with storing the data. Maybe there can be a way around it. Uh, so it's like automatic, just, you just enter it. One thing, you need to supply root password in some way because there's no root password for security reasons. I know that for some open source images, that's not the case. I believe for, you know, like Pinebook images, uh, we had some default password. So this is the case. One of the ways how you can do that, I believe Neil said it or somebody told me that they're using the emergency mode. I would not do that. We have Ignition. Uh, you know, I will talk about it later. So you can use Ignition with USB stick to actually set or combustion up to you uh, to set some default password and then you are done. It may be like step out of your comfort zone. I was like also, oh, I have to generate something for USB, but it's totally cool and it makes sense. If you have multiple devices, you can use same configuration. Um, it's very easy on my Raspberry Pi. If, if you are not for it, uh, there's still the traditional, traditional installer which will let you set root, uh, you know, your password and whatever. So you are covered, um, you know, or if you are using GNOME boxes with Flatpak and you, you can't use USB redirection, this is your friend. And then we have like raw image, which you can just, you know, upload to public cloud or wherever you want to use it. I mentioned it works on KVM, it works on Zen, so, you know, this is all covered. So, uh, yeah, configuration of uh, system with ignition and combustion. So either DDD image or use the wizard that you've seen just to dump the image to whatever VM you are running at or even hardware if you want to. Uh, then create a USB drive which is labeled as Ignition. It has to be, I believe, X4. And just put a script on it or a YAML file, um, you know, which will basically set some basic settings. And this is pretty cool. I have a demo for it. I would prefer to actually leave the demo for the end uh, so we do not run out of, out of time because there's a few extra slides compared to the demo that we've had for our Linux App Summit. Documentation. I feel like we've done a great job here because all of the docs is actually uh, inherited from Slee Micro. So that's what we say on the wiki. Just go to Slee Micro documentation. It's all applicable. We did like minimal changes. And this is our knowledge base. It's pretty well documented. The deployment guide is really good. It talks about ignition, about combustion, how to do that. It talks you uh, through the, you know, like management through cockpit. How you recommend to read it. Uh, now you are hearing about the USB images. Do you really have to create them manually? Do you really have to create these uh, YAML files or write some scripts? Um, and I can, I have some great news. So Future Technologies team, specifically Lauren, I'm not sure if this is here. No? Okay. He should be. Um, he actually wrote like some microservice which is creating all of this user side. Like you, you know, you access, um, we actually plan to deploy it on IgniteOpenSUSE.org. And you just go there, you you know, on the user side, you, you type your password, your users, your services that you want to have, and you can actually click on generate the image. So you have to have, I believe, can ISO image installed locally, but it just runs it and it spits out the, the USB image that you can dump to the drive or you can just mount it, you know, to, to virtual manager, virt manager, and you are set. Um, it's like a few seconds. So this is how it looks like. I know that most of you prefer combustion. I prefer it as well. I have some combustion script that works for me, but basically, if, well, let me just go to the page. Yeah, it's weird. So here you click add user, right? Let's root, let's use, like, I don't know, test for example. You can add your SSH key if you want to. Do you want now services? Just, just keep it minimal. This is your config if you want to dump it and just do convert to image. 
I hope it doesn't crash. So it's running in a container, which is part of that Git repository. Yeah, it's asking you where to dump the image. Use the image, you dump it to the drive, and you are done. I feel like this is pretty cool. I wish that there would be like pointer to existing combustion scripts, which you know cover your use case. I don't know, K3S node, whatever you want. Just download it. Uh, maybe change the password through Ignition if you want to. Additionally, and that's it. Uh, I feel like this would be a really cool way how to pre-deploy. You know, maybe home mirror, whatever use case you may you may actually have in your mind that somebody else was already thinking about and prepared like some recipes for. So for me, this is this is a really nice way how to deploy images. It's also something new. Um, I was also not so comfortable with this this workflow, but. So far, I like it. Um, let me go back to slides. Yeah, we'll have to hit escape, I guess. This is so weird. Ah, okay, save. Um, cool, let's go here. No. How does it, yeah, okay. Right, yeah, so we've covered that. Uh, as I mentioned, we've had release in previous month. Uh, I believe it was like mid-May or so. Uh, so you can already get it from getopensuse.org. There is one good thing, and I hope that we can maybe improve it on the uh, micro S as well. All of the images that we actually produce are available from the main page. You don't have to click through any alternative uh, downloads or so. I think this is pretty good. Specifically, people on ARM actually complain that we have too many hardware-specific images which they have to really look up for if they go to Raspbian or so. It's everything on one page. I feel there is definitely space for improvement so far. On micro, we are doing really well. And this is it. So let's, let's look at the demo. The demo was done in, in the time where the self-installer uh, was not working, so it's actually done through DD. But I hope that you will still like it. It also covers cockpit a little bit. So let me move it. Right. So what we are doing basically is getting the image, downloading it, uh, dumping it to the USB drive. I'll be running it on Raspi and then we'll wait until the installation is done. It's really quick. The extraction of the or dumping of the image takes, I don't know, two minutes, Richard, something like that. It's really fast. Just hit reboot, uh, or it reboots itself automatically and boots you to the system. So this was also done. You can see that in the past, you've had it in the alternative downloads, which was a little bit of pain. You had to really look for the image. Now it's much better. I'm so happy for that. And, uh, and yeah, we can maybe speed up then the waiting time. But it's pretty quick. I feel like for deployment and the fact that it will be up and running, you can just run containers out of the box. It's pretty cool. And this is the ignition drive. So if you would be doing it manually, um, you have to format it, you have to label it as ignition, it has to be X4, and it has to have, I believe, ignition directory in it. We will see, it will be all displayed. Right. I feel the service actually saves you extra minutes, specifically when you are starting. I believe that if you are an advanced user, you want to probably have your own combustion script, you know, that you maintain. And, but like for getting started, the service really helps. Yeah, it's also all is covered in the documentation to the com, so you can just go there. There is the description of the directory structure that you need to have for combustion. I believe in this demo we will be actually using combustion node ignition. Yeah, so here we are actually creating the X partition. Yeah, just label it ignition. That's requirement. The interesting part was, I was talking to PM, and I was like, what is these self-install images? And you know, we didn't have really any docs written for it yet at the point in time when I believe it was around beta for it. And he was like, yeah, you know, like this is actually the recommended way how people should deploy it. I was like, recommend it? You know, like in our case, I'm just pretty sure that everybody will just use the installer. And he said, well, for all of these under devices and so on, or for VM, you know, if you want to develop it, it's just, it makes sense. And I have to agree. Right, it's pretty minimal, it doesn't have even Vim in it, uh, so um, my combustion script uh, covers basically Vim, SSH key, and sets the password. And uh, yeah, leaves in the message of the day or whatever the configured with combustion, so you know when you boot it.
for me, the another interesting thing about Micro, while we are actually waiting for demo to finish, is that it gives you preview, I believe, if you would strip out the desktop, how the, how the output look like. It's based on the old code stream, so we would have to rebase everything. But like the concept, I feel, is really close. We just need to you know, work out on the desktop part, which is covered in the Micro's desktop. So if, if you are kind of interested how would such system work for you, which would not be your rolling release, I believe this is pretty close. Right, uh, so I'm actually like physically powering Raspberry Pi there, and then we are actually waiting for, for it to, to boot. I feel like maybe we can just speed it up. I'm refreshing services, yeah, so this is the cockpit interface. If you boot it, uh, you actually get on the port 1990 the uh, you know, prompt. You use your root password that you actually set through, the, uh, through combustion, and you get there. And what I will be doing in the demo is uh, basically starting a container. I was looking for Nginx, the first Nginx that I found in the registry. Suzekom, that's one thing I arrested yesterday. I feel like if we want to really, uh, you know, propagate BCI, we need to make sure that it's available as de by default. Um, yeah. So yeah, at that point in time, iSCSID was failing, so this is why the service failed. Otherwise, this is the cockpit interface. If you haven't seen it before, uh, the the installer, if you've seen the demo by Yastim, is actually based on the same technology. So you could. Reconfigure the Podman, you know, in the combustion if you would like to. Here, I really wanted to show how easy it is for the web browser. And technically, if you install it, let's say on your Raspberry or whatever device you want, this is this could be the only management interface that you will use to manage it. If you are really interested in running containers, or recently also VMs, I believe that the you know people are actually turning away from Word Manager towards Cockpit for for Word Machine management. So I'm just grabbing whatever there is for for Nginx. Clicking download, it will take a few seconds, and you just basically started container, you know, through web browser on freshly installed machine. Everything can be done within five minutes. This is actually real time. Like this is, I was recording it as, you know, there's no skipping, nothing. If if I would use the self-install, it would be even faster. Yeah, you just say uh, you just set apart which one is actually the one on the container, which one is on the host. I'm using 8080, and that's it. Bang. Just refresh, and you have your Nginx instance. I feel if you have Raspberry or some microservice that you need to run at home, this is a really good candidate, especially if you don't want to touch it. Like, you have to be okay with not having the latest, greatest host OS, like not having the latest, greatest kernel. That will be always the domain, domain of microOS. But if you are looking for low maintenance, I don't want to touch it. If we could somehow get community to manage it for four years, maybe by skipping releases, I don't know. There are options if there is a demand. Uh, this could be a really good candidate. We were thinking that it could be also based for automotive efforts and so on. Mm, it seems like that code stream is too old for them. Yep, and that's really all. Any questions? Or how many of you actually use Leap Micro? I expect like at least two hands. No, Richard, no? <laughs> okay. No one, okay. At least me. <laughs> Then that's all. So just go to get open Cesar, give it a shot. I feel it's really cool. If you are using virt uh, virtual manager, you can just redirect USB that the igni fuel ignition will generate, and you are set. Like it can be done within one minute or oh, two minutes. Cool. Then that's really all for me. Thank you.